So um, as we saw, Jesus, the great judge in the millennium period, uh, which is for a thousand years, after that millennium period, we then saw there is the great white throne judgment. And there, God has basically separated people who are going into eternity to be with God forever and those that suffer his punishment. And um, we see that Jesus, we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 24 and 28, that Jesus gives, gives up, as it were, the kingdom to God. His, his, re, his raison d'etre, as we would say in French, of being the mediator, the redeemer, the judge, all, all of his different offices now actually come to an end. Because the finality of everything is we are told that God will be the all and in all. And there will be a perfect harmony. Everything will be just absolutely perfect, splendid, wonderful. And Jesus will no longer need to mediate because God will be all and in all. Don't ask me how that will work. Don't know. <laughs> but that's how it will end. Praise God. Revelations 21, verses 6 to 7. I am the Alpha and Omega. Remember, that's how Jesus <clears throat> presents himself to John in the first chapter of Revelations. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's in the beginning of time and he's the end of time and everything in between. He is, he is. He that overcomes shall inherit all things. Wow, all things. Everything that there is will be yours. Everything that is will be ours. They won't be my stuff, your stuff, it's our stuff. Everything will inherit all things. And I will be his God. That's the first time that Jesus actually speaks those words. I will be your God. We are told many times, we sang it, Emmanuel means what? God with us. But it is the first time in the scripture, but it is the, the end of all things that Jesus finally said, and I will be your God. Amen. And you will be my son. That's how it ends. Now we know there are multifaceted relationship that we have with the Lord as well. We can also be the bride of Christ. Um, but here is another facet where Jesus himself says, I will be his God. It's beautiful. Revelations 21 and verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and earth were passed away. Who loves the sea? Anybody? I love the sea. Sorry, new, new earth, no sea. I believe there's going to be some lovely lakes. I don't know, there's something about water, isn't there? It's just so beautiful. But it's, a new, it's, going, to be, it's going to be a new place. A new heaven and a new earth. Behold, I make all things new. 2 Peter tells us, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. Now I remind you that there are more than 10 billion galaxies, and in each galaxy there are hundreds of billions of stars. Well, we're told that's all going to be rolled and folded away. That is the power of God. We're told that Jesus holds everything together by the word of his power. And that same Jesus will say, all right, 
New heaven, new earth. <laughs> Rolled it all up. Et voilà. It has not entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what he's prepared for us. Isn't that beautiful? <clears throat> so let's read Revelations 21 and let's go to verse 3. And I heard a great voice, and for once the King James is wrong. <laughs> The, the, the most manuscripts, good and the right ones, uh, say out of the throne. Yeah. And I heard a great voice out of the throne of heaven saying, The tabernacle of God is with men. Again, we remember John 1 and verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and tabernacled with men. Here Jesus is no longer tabernacling with us in the flesh. As man, he now tabernacles with us as God. Still man, but his divinity now comes through completely as his work as the Son of God has finished. Isn't that beautiful? Revelations 21. Hmm. It says actually afterwards in verse 3, it says, And he will dwell with, with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And we're told that these words are true and faithful. Have you, do you remember what true and faithful always talks about Jesus? Who's the faithful and the true? Notice it's singular. It's very important. A lot of people get mixed up. There's one throne in heaven, there's one sat on it, and that one is God, and yet the Son of God, and yet the Lamb of God, and yet the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One. It's singular. He will dwell. His people. God himself. Wonderful. Revelations 21. I love this. It's so, it's, so, it's, so, it's so beautiful. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega. It is done. Doesn't that remind you of something? Jesus said something very similar on the cross. It is done finished and at the end of everything he now says it is done time for the strong's concordance what's the difference in those two words it is finished teleo means complete there is a discharge of debt it's filled up done is genomai which mead means made, ended, fulfilled. Isn't that beautiful? It's an end. The end of this 7,000 year plan. It's done. Imagine how Jesus must feel as the Son of Man and the Son of God to say, it's done. Hallelujah. It's done. I've done it. I've done it. I am Alpha and Omega. Again, we know who the Alpha and Omega is. It's done. The Alpha and the Omega, I remind you, again, is how Jesus presented him to John. And a lot of people say, oh, but that's, that's, not, that's, not, the, that's not the Son of God. That's not the Son of Man. 
Do you know why it is? It's very simple. Because in verse 18 of chapter 1, when he says, I am Alpha and I am Omega, he then says, I was, I'm sorry, I am, I was, and I'm alive again. Now, who died and was made alive again? If not Jesus, the Son of Man, the Son of God. So he is the Alpha and the Omega. Beautiful. 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 Revelations 21, verse 7, again, I will be his God and he shall be my son. Hallelujah. For those of us who haven't had uh, fathers that have been close to us, well, don't worry. The story ends in a beautiful, beautiful way. I am he that lives, was dead, and I'm alive forevermore. Wonderful. Thank you, Jesus. Revelations 21. Now we focus in this chapter on the new Jerusalem. And uh, as it's coming down, we're told it's the length, breadth, height, and width of France. That's pretty big. It's about the quarter of the size of the moon. And this is uh, a dwelling place for the saints of God. And it says in verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty, even the Lamb, are the temple of it. And Revelation 21, 23 goes on to say, The city had no need of the sun, for the glory of God lights it, and the Lamb is the light. Do you get that? Do you see? It's God's light, but it's emanating from the Lamb. Do you see that? It's not another elderly man who's shining and his son shining with him. God is invisible, I remind you. He is spirit. Jesus is solely the image of the invisible God. And that's why it says, God lights it and the Lamb is the light. Beautiful. Wonderful. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. The glory of God is in the face of Jesus Christ. One face. There's one face. God has one face. It's in the face of his Son. Beautiful. If Jesus is the image of the invisible God, where else can God have an image? If all the fullness of the Godhead bodily is in the person of Jesus, where else can God be? Bodily. He dwells in one body, that of the only begotten Son of God, who is God. As the Jews rightly said about him, because you being a man, make yourself God. One throne, one body, one face. He's the Lamb, he's the light. He's the glory of God manifested to his creation. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Revelations 22 and verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life proceeding out of the throne of God even of the Lamb. There's rivers, living waters. You and me are blessed because we, hopefully, all have the living water already springing up inside of us. Amen. But for those who go into eternity from the great white throne judgment, they're given to drink the living water. And by that, they then live forever, because it's the water of life. But you have the water of life through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus says you will never die. Why? Because only God has immortality. And God has placed his immortal spirit in yours, thus making you immortal. Beautiful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise his name. 
Oh, I just uh, this this plan of God is just. Uh, I, I, when I think everything that it's cost him, and still costs him, all for the benefit of us. Such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Oh, he doesn't just say, I love you, David. I love you. He doesn't just say it. God demonstrates through what he has endured with me, his love. I, wouldn't, I couldn't live with myself. <laughs> I don't know how he manages. But he does. And it's, it's just wonderful. Revelation 22, verse 3. Once again, we have the throne, singular, of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, singular, his servant, singular, shall serve him. Jesus is our God in eternity. All singular. Wonderful. Revelations 22, verse 4. And they shall see his face. Remember the Old Testament? Moses says, show me your glory. There shall, no man shall see my face and live. And we shall see him, Paul says, as he is, face to face. Imagine one day you're going to look into the face who made you, who died for you, who made the universe, the new heaven, the new earth, who knows everything about you. You're going to look in that face, the face of God in the person of Jesus. Oh, my goodness. That face that normally people would see, if they saw, they would die. Revelations 22 and verse 19. A warning, don't take away from the words of this book, or God shall take away his part out of the book of life. Again, that's reiterated in Revelations chapter 3 by Jesus. He takes away the names out of the book of life. Don't, don't, do not be duped by people that say once saved, always saved. You can be sure that you're saved. You, you can be. You just keep believing in Jesus. So we're clear. But there are many people that no longer believe in Jesus. Their salvation is not assured. People who don't forgive their salvation is not assured. Those people who live blatantly in sin, enjoy it, love it, and just think that Jesus is an insurance policy, their salvation is not assured. So unless you're in one of those three categories, it is well with you. Amen. So this is a question that I ask you now. God is spirit. That's what Jesus said. God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit. So my question to you is, shall we see God as he is outside of the person of Jesus? This is a very interesting question. Because we're told that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So if God's invisible, shall we see him as he is? Remember what Jesus said, you have neither seen his shape or heard his voice. No man has seen God at any time. That's what the scriptures tell us. So my question to us is, shall we see God as he is, as a spirit? Don't you just love these questions? <laughs> Luke 10, 22. All things are delivered to me of my Father. 
no man knows who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And those to whom the Son may wish to reveal him. Hallelujah. Now, the thing is this. <clears throat> Things are going to get a little bit philosophical here, and I'm not pretending to have the perfect answer here, okay? So please keep your tomatoes in your handbags. But it seems to me. You see, we live in a three-dimensional world, and we see. I see. John in heaven saw. Write down the things which you will see. Okay? Now, science has proven that there are more, at, at least 10 dimensions in the universe, not three. That's a reality outside of what we can see, feel, touch, hear. And uh, that was actually proved in the 13th century by a rabbi called Nachmanides. And do you know how he figured that out? Just by reading Genesis. I don't know how he did it, but that's what I'm told. But anyway, so what, why is this important? Well, I believe that in heaven and in eternity, we will have more than three, a three-dimensional experience. Now we're told that the son might desire to reveal the father. Now that word to see and to reveal, again, back to concordance, is optanomai. And this is seeing is more of a gaze where our eyes are wide open to something that is remarkable and intense. So that's the kind of seeing that we will experience. And I'm thinking that perhaps our seeing will be more than just visual. Now, for those of you who've seen The Matrix, <laughs> have you seen The Matrix? For those who've seen, you, you should actually watch that film. It's a bit, you know, it's a bit silly, lots of guns and everything else. But, there's a, but there is, a, there is, there is a, something about The Matrix where a certain, the chosen one, sees the world differently than others. There's another dimension that he sees. And I, I simply believe that when we see the Father, it'll not just be a seeing. Because you know that spirit is wind, ruach. Who knows, maybe we'll be caught up into this invisible wind that God is, this power, this... I think we're allowed to dream a little, to be honest. But I do believe we'll see him because Jesus told us, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. And I don't think just God in the person of Jesus, which I do think that'll be our standard, if I can call it that, relationship, because we are, God has created a community-based experience, okay? I do believe that Jesus will remain the focal point of our relationship with God, but I do believe that there will be another dimension that we will know. Can we put that up, please? Matthew 5, 8. Blessed 
are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Who's got a pure heart here? <laughs> Not to worry. That's how our hearts will be at that point in time. <laughs> They'll be perfect. We'll have perfect hearts. We'll have pure hearts. And so I do believe that, as Jesus said, the Father is in me and I am in you. I believe that Jesus will allow us to come and be in the Father and we will experience and we will perceive, understand, know, feel, experience God as spirit. That is my personal opinion and I don't see why it shouldn't be with the two verses that we have just read. But like I say, and to finish, Colossians 1.15, Colossians 2.9, the chapters of uh, John as well, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. He is our God in eternity. In him dwells all the fullness of God bodily. Jesus said, the Father is in me and I am in him. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. I and my Father are one. As Hebrews as well, I didn't write down, Hebrews 1, 3, the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being is in Jesus. His exact representation of who he is. But one thing I'm absolutely sure of, <laughs> when God will be the all and in all, it'll be wonderful. It'll be amazing and um, let's all meet together when that happens and, and let's see how right we all got it <laughs> on that day because it will happen and uh, I, I, I do believe we we shall experiment God as spirit um, but we shall see God in Jesus bodily forever and ever Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that indeed it started with you, it ends with you. Father in heaven, thank you for revealing yourself in Jesus. You are in heaven and we thank you that you are one with your Son. Jesus, thank you that you are one with our Father that you have gone to your Father and our Father, to your God and our God. Thank you that you have brought us to be one in him and in you. These things we know are too wonderful for us to comprehend, but we know they are true because, Lord, we believe your word is true. And so we just thank you for the day for that day when we will hear the words, it is done. And eternity will await us with a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem of which we will be the citizens. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Remember that song? Someday I will go to see my Jesus. Not too far I will go and see his face. One day I will go to see my Jesus. If today, while on earth, I'll walk his way. Walk his way this week. God bless you. Thank you.